Good morning, my name is Daniel Oppenheimer. I'm the Land Program Manager at the Hill Country Alliance, here with Elizabeth McGreevy. She's a natural resources planner, an author, and a sixth generation Texan. Good morning, Elizabeth, how are you doing? Good morning, Daniel, doing fine. Elizabeth, you just published a book, Wanted, Mountain Cedar, Dead and Alive. What inspired you to write this book about such an infamous tree? Well, you know, I grew up in Texas and spent a lot of my summers in the hill country. So I had seen, I knew what the mountain cedars were, but when I moved here about 20 years ago, I was told by the companies where I was working that the trees are not native. And then I started working at the Wild Basin as a volunteer trail guide. And there I was told that the trees are native. And the director there sent me to Brother Daniel Lynch at St. Edward's University, who had been studying the trees for decades. Mm. And he told me, yes, they are native. You know, there's uh, ice age pollen that shows they've been here at least 10,000 years. And then he started uh, giving me all his research and all his background studies. And he finally said, Elizabeth, you need to write a book about this. So uh, for a land steward out in the rural hill country, or perhaps someone who uh, is really invested in their local park um, where there's ash juniper growing on, on that property, what do you want to make sure they take away from your book? Um, I want them to first of all recognize that in my book, I'm not saying that all mountain cedars, that you have to keep all of them. That's why the title says Wanted Dead and Alive, that there's many ways to use what I'm calling pioneering thickets of bushy cedars to help restore soils and uh, groundwater storage and all that. And that instead of focusing on mountain cedars, a single species of tree, we need to instead be shifting our focus to what's going on down under, looking at the soils, you know, finding ways to maximize groundwater storage. And what I've learned in the book is that it has less to do with a tree, an actual species of tree, and more to do with the type of vegetation cover. Mm. So we're just coming down here to explain. A lot of times people, uh, when mountain cedars fall down, they clean them all up, they get rid of them. This is to show why you shouldn't get rid of all of them is that especially in a forested or woodland ecosystem, they can continue to protect new plants, new trees that are coming up. So yeah, this is just another site where we've got a, a dead mountain cedar. And again, it's providing this protective cover, not only for this beautiful uh, beauty berry, but also these baby cedar elm seedlings, which are popping up really throughout this system. So again, it's acting like a cage. It's providing protective cover for these plants to grow and put out uh, new seeds and, and really enhance the health of this forest. Okay, so here we are now inside of a pioneering thicket of bushing cedars. Again, all of these uh, mountain cedars have more of a bushy habit, you know, that they're branching low to the ground. And it's, a lot of people will say, oh, there's nothing growing underneath here. Um, but when you look closer, you will find a lot of plants. They're just younger plants. You know, like uh, right here, we have a small little agarita. You have a, you know, like a, a young little blue stem. You have a young little live oak right here. This, look at the leaf layer. This is all organic matter. This is what's going to help the soils, this organic matter. And that is what's going to start restoring. I mean, look at this soil. The soil is rich, it's brown, it's really, really nice. And it's not as dark as underneath the forest or woodland, but this is definitely heading in the right direction because before the soil was almost white. You know, it's that bare bones caliche stuff. Um, so Elizabeth, as you know, we're seeing a lot of growth and development across Texas and especially in the hill country. And with that growing population, we're starting to see more attention drawn to our state's water, not just our flowing creeks and rivers, but also our groundwater, our aquifers as well. So how does this discussion of, of good land stewardship and of, of mountain cedars, how does this all fit together? 
Uh, for decades, we've been told that you need to clear out the mountain cedars to get more water. And that was based on uh, kind of outdated water use studies. And what new research is showing, one thing, is that more water is recharges the aquifer and groundwaters at the land, you know, where it soaks into the land as mm. opposed to in cracks and uh, fissures in uh, creeks and rivers. Mm. And so therefore, that means it's more important to focus on the health of the soil so it can accept that water. So more water will infiltrate into the soil. And as we were showing is that these pioneering thickets are building up the organic matter. And that is what increases the infiltration. So even if initially they might be using a little bit more water, intercepting a little bit more, as time passes, more and more of that water comes through and it's able to accept more water and get it into the aquifer where it needs to be. If instead you clear it all out, what happens is that you set everything back to zero mm. and everything is compacted and hard again and more too much water is running off, not enough water soaking into the ground. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us again. If you'd like to get a copy of Elizabeth's book, please go to barnesandnoble.com. Uh, check out her website. Also check out ours at hillcountryalliance.org to learn about a variety of educational resources to help us take care of this beautiful hill country. Appreciate you joining us. <music>